Okay, so this video is, uh, is just reviewing a bunch of the assignments that were submitted and I'm, I'm going to show uh, methods that, that were submitted that, that did not work and what was wrong with them and how to fix them. So if, if you got anything wrong on uh, assignment number uh, 18, then you may want to watch this video. And even if you got it right, what you'll see in this video are other implementations. And sometimes you can learn a lot from what other people do. And even if you didn't make exactly the same mistake, um, there might be something that you could learn from this. So um, the first I'm gonna, method I'm going to talk about here is uh, flip horizontal. And so this is one implementation of flip horizontal. Um, let me go back to that. That did not work. I'm going to uh, go ahead and run the assignment and we'll see what happens when we try to run it. If we go flip horizontal, uh, nothing happens. And down here on the console we can see uh, some error messages and the message we get is array index out of bounds, coordinate out of bounds. And so what we see here in the uh, myimage.setRGB, my image width minus x. And so the first thing I see here is that um, say this thing has 500 rows, my image dot width is going to evaluate to 500. When x is 0, we're, we're trying to use an x value of 500. But remember, indexes always start in Java at 0. So the largest valid index would be 1 less than the width. So what I'm going to do is just subtract 1 from this. And so you say, well, what if, what about when x is equal to width? And once you get the width minus the width is 0 minus 1 and negative 1, that would be invalid, right? Well, we're only going through this as long as x is less than the width. So x never gets up to where it's quite equal to the width. And so the smallest value you would, you would ever reach from this part of the expression is a positive 1 minus 1 gives you a 0, which is exactly the smallest value you want. So you got to be very careful with your boundary conditions. Off by one error is very common. When you see this array index out of bounds exception, you should always look for, okay, did I do an off by one error with my conditions? Did I start out on the first iteration with something that's out of bounds, or did I go in my last iteration with something out of bounds? That's the first place to check for an array index out of bounds exception. So then if I uh, run this again, I may not get exactly what I wanted. But it will at least fix that array index out of bounds. So now when I try to uh, flip horizontal, oh, it flips over half the image. What is this? So what's happening is it's overwriting pixels. Okay, so we've got this my image. If we set the pixel in, um, it's starting out in column zero. So you, you, you set the last one equal to the first, you lose some information. You're overwriting information. So, so you end up going down the, the, the last column and replacing it with, with what's in the zero column, and then the next to last column with what's in the uh, one before it. And so if I look at this, if you replace this last column with what's in the first column, and then this column with what's in this column, when you get to your midpoint, and you start replacing things over here with the things that were over here, well, this has already been destroyed. This one was already replaced with what's this one. So you've copied it over to here, and then you're copying it back. You end up with exactly what you started with over here. So anything on the left side ends up unmodified, and you only end up reversing the right half. So how do you prevent this sort of destruction of data? Um, well, the easiest way is probably with a temporary image. So you say something like buffered image temp is equal to some new buffered image. It's going to have the same width and height as the old one. So we're going to say something like my image dot get width. and my image dot get height
And then buffered image, we need to give it a type. Uh, int RGB is what we've been using. And it seems to work okay. And then instead of writing into my image, we write into temp. So, so what does this look like? This, what this looks like is we've got this method, flip horizontal. It's got memory on the stack. You've got this photo panel object, which is inside of the heap. The photo panel object has a my image variable, so it's pointing at its image. What we've just done is created a new image, and so I'm just going to copy this. We've created a new image in the heap, and we've stored it in a variable on the stack. And so the flip horizontal method has a variable called temp, and that variable points to this new image that we just created, which is at this moment blank, okay? So when I say at this moment, at the moment right after this code is executed. And so then you get the pixel out of my image and you store it in a different location in temp image. So it's going to go through at the last column of this temporary image and it's going to copy the stuff from the first column of the, the my image. So it's going to copy this stuff over to here and then the next column of my image into the second to last column of temp and so on. So everything ends up in reverse order. Then after you're done copying, after you get out of this double for loop where you do all your copying, you want to set my image equal to temp. What does that do? Temp is a variable that's holding the address in memory of where this new image that, that now st stores the, the horizontally flipped copy of the other one. We want to copy the address stored in temp into the variable holding my image. What does that do? That ends up, when we, when we do the assignment, when we say my image equals temp, it's copying this address into this variable. So now my image no longer points to the old image. It'll point to the temporary image. And then Java, as soon as it sees that there is no variable pointing to this old image anymore, it's got what it calls a garbage collector. It'll delete that from memory. And then when flip horizontal is finished, its memory, the method of the memory, after that last instruction is executed for the method, the method returns, it is popped off of the stack and gone. So this reference to that memory is gone, and the only thing that is pointing to it is the variable that's inside of the object. So now if I run this, so we've, we've changed a couple of, we've added this new allocation for an image, we've changed this to point to temp. After we're done flipping it, we then replace my image with the flipped version, and we've also made sure that we don't get the out of bounds exception. Okay, so now it flips horizontally. Um, let's look and see somebody else who had trouble with flip horizontal. Hmm. I believe student that I've numbered here is eight also had trouble with flip horizontal. Let's see what that looks like. Here we've got the width and height mixed up. 
So when you're flipping horizontal, the width and height of the new image are the same as the old image, and the width should be the first parameter. Um, I'm not sure what they're doing here with a left shift of 10, 10, and 10. That's just completely wrong. And in fact, you really don't even need to separate out the uh, individual red, green, and blue values. So you can just get rid of that altogether. And then they have not assigned the flipped image. that's stored in temp to my image. Oh, and also he's, he's not uh, reversed the x and y values. So um, I have a feeling this student just was a little bit lost altogether. Um, on this particular method. So let's see, who else had problems? The student that I've numbered here as 13. Okay, so the, here's here they got the they created temp properly. They've got a double for loop. They get the pixel from my image. They've almost got the right coordinates here, so, so they're going to get an index out of bounds. And they remember to set my image to temp, except they're doing it inside of the for loop. So what this does is the very first time through the for loop, we're getting one pixel and putting it in the right place, and then we take and replace my image with temp. Oh, and they've started with a one. Oh, that's interesting. So let's uh, let's not start with do the minus one here. This is very interesting. So when x is equal to one, that's how they fix their set array index out of bounds. They end up not going down the very last column though, which may not be noticeable except that this gives them something that probably looks like a, a black screen. Let's let's go ahead and run this and see what it does. I think I'm running the wrong project. So in Eclipse, if you've got multiple projects, you have to be careful to select the project you're trying to run. Yeah, black image, right? And do we see one pixel? We can't even see one pixel that was copied. Um, so in memory, what happened was they made their copy of the image they copied one pixel and then immediately inside of the loop broke the connection to the old pixel or the old image and made a connection to the new one And then from there on out, for the rest of the for loop, it's going to be uh, copying pixels back and forth inside this image. But this image only has one pixel set. All the rest of them are still black. And so it's not going to fix any other pixels. And when you run it, it that one pixel is, is just, you, you can't even see it. So this setting my image to temp has to be done after you get outside of your double for loop. And uh, one thing here, I get a little picky about uh, where are the indentation of my code. It makes it a lot more legible if you, if you use indentation to keep track of your nesting depth of the squiggly brackets. So now by moving this outside, it should just about work. So if I run this now, all I've done is move my image equals temp outside of the for loop. 
and um, it flips it. Now if you look really close, I'm not sure if it's going to show up in the video, there's a black line, a really thin black line down this first row. That's because they started out as x equals 1 instead of x equals 0. But if I set it to 0, I get an array index out of bounds error. So here it's crashing. So the right way to do it, instead of starting x at 1, you do an x minus 1 right here. And then that'll work. All right, so that was student 13. Let's look and see what student 16 did. Okay, I'm not even going to go here. There's, there's really nothing to see there. All right, so that's flip horizontal. I'm going to try to make uh, separate videos for, uh, because this one got a little bit long, for uh, rotate clockwise, make gray swap, invert, lighten, and darken. And um, you can watch whichever videos are appropriate for whatever you got wrong. Thank you.